Hello everybody, welcome to Shaders Monthly. Today we talk about texture mapping and how it is implemented in GLSL. In computer graphics it is common that certain properties must vary depending on the location on the surface of a 3D mesh object. These properties can be anything, color, roughness, surface normal offset, emission and so on. For example, here you see the 3D mesh of a stone demon. If we change the color for each vertex, this is a possible solution, but the resolution is typically too low. But when we use a 2D texture, we can get a result that contains more details. The applied 2D texture is shown on the left here. A 2D texture is built from a 2D raster image, which is a 2D array of pixels of a certain width and height. Now we also apply a texture for the normal offset. And now another texture for the roughness. And finally a texture for the emission, such that the eyes of this stone demon are emitting yellow light. Consequently, the basic idea of texture mapping is to change certain properties with a higher resolution than it would be possible per 3D vertex. To apply a 2D texture to a 3D mesh, we need to define a 2D texture coordinate for each 3D vertex. So each 3D vertex with coordinates x, y, z gets assigned a 2D vector of texture coordinates, which defines the position within the texture. The coordinates of the 2D vector are often denoted by u and v. Therefore, texture mapping is also called UV mapping. However, OpenGL uses a different naming convention and calls the coordinates s and t instead. The texture coordinates are independent of the resolution of the raster image. So no matter what is the width and the height of the raster image, the texture coordinates are always in the range from 0 to 1. The origin of the coordinate system of the texture coordinates is in the bottom left corner. u goes to the right and v goes into the up direction. Consequently, a texture coordinate of 0, 0 is the bottom left corner, 1, 0 at the bottom right corner, 0, 1 at the top left corner, and 1, 1 at the top right corner. Using the texture coordinates, the texture image is applied to the 3D mesh, like a room would be covered with wallpaper or a birthday present with wrapping paper. Now let's implement texture mapping in GLSL. This will also give us further insight on how the process of texture mapping works exactly. I will use the GSN Composer at gsn-lib.org as a shader editor here, but you can use any other shader editor as well. We are writing pure OpenGL GLSL code, which you can use everywhere. Links to examples that execute the same shader code using C++ or Java can be found in the video description. Our implementation starts from the first example from episode number one, in which we have rendered a simple red triangle. Click Project and type in the project name, Shaders Monthly 01, and click Open Existing. Then open the graph Red Triangle and press Play in the Time Control panel. We select the shader node and click the Edit Code button. This dialog is the shader editor of the GSN Composer. In the top section we can define the vertex shader and in the bottom section the fragment shader. The current code is very simple. In the vertex shader, which is called in parallel for every vertex of the input mesh, we have the input vertex attribute position, that is assigned to the output variable GL position. For each GL position output, the OpenGL pipeline performs 3D clipping, perspective division and viewport transformation, as we have discussed in detail in episodes number 1 and 2. For every three vertices that are received, the OpenGL pipeline generates a triangle primitive in the image plane. Afterwards, the triangle is processed by the rasterizer, which computes which pixels in the output image are covered by the triangle. For each pixel, a fragment shader is executed in parallel. Its task is to assign a color to the corresponding fragment, which is achieved by setting the out color variable to a 4 vector. The coordinates of this vector correspond to the red, green, blue and opacity value of the output pixel. For example, if we change out color to 0, 1, 0, 1, we get a green triangle. And for 0, 0, 1, 1, a blue triangle. 
Now we need to access the texture coordinates of the triangle. The texture coordinates change per vertex. Therefore, it is an invariable of the vertex shader. In Vec2 text coord. The vertex shader should not do anything with the texture coordinates for the moment. We just pass them through. Out Vec2 interpolated text coord. And in the main function we type interpolated text coord equals text coord. And in the fragment shader we define in vec2 interpolated text coord. Because our input mesh has three vertices, the main function in the vertex shader is called three times for the current setup. We get three vertex positions from the GL position output and three texture coordinates from the interpolated text coord output. The pipeline takes the three vertices and generates a triangle, which is passed to the rasterizer. The rasterizer generates interpolated values for each out variable. In our case, this means we get interpolated texture coordinates in the fragment shader, which explains why we have given the variable this name. We can visualize the interpolated texture coordinates by putting them in the red and green channel of the output color. Out color equals vec4, interpolated text coord dot s, interpolated text coord dot t, 0, 1. Apply and close. If we interpret the color as texture coordinates, we get 0, 0 for this vertex of the triangle. This vertex on the right has full red, no green, which means the texture coordinate is 1, 0. And it is not easy to see, but the last vertex up here has 0 0.5 in the red channel and 1.0 in the green channel, which corresponds to a texture coordinate of 0 0.5 and 1. And, as you see, the rasterizer interpolates the texture coordinates for the pixels within the triangle. Now let's pass a texture to our shader. To this end, we need a raster image. In the GSN Composer, you can upload an image in the project dialog or drag and drop an image into the graph area. Okay, let's first move these nodes around to make some space. There are also different kind of nodes that generate an image, which you can find under Image Processing, Compute, Generate. Here you can also choose a webcam input or a video as a source for your texture image. Let's keep it simple for the moment and create a color grid. We set its type to Labels. We open the shader editor again. In the fragment shader we add Uniform Sampler 2D My Texture. This is a uniform variable of type Sampler 2D that represents a 2D texture. Remember that the uniform variable is a constant during a rendering call, which means that the variable refers to the same texture for all output pixels. We can now get a color value from the texture with the built-in GLSL texture function. Vec4 text color equals texture. The first parameter now is a sampler 2D, which is my texture. And the second parameter is the texture coordinate as a Vec2 interpolated text coord. Out color equals text color. Apply code and close. We see that the GSN composer has created a new slot called my texture. And when we connect the color grid data node with this slot, we get a texture triangle. Perfect. Let's change the texture coordinate of the input mesh. We create the node 3D, compute, mesh, text coord edit. We connect the mesh with the mesh slot and the texture with the texture slot. Then we connect the output mesh with the input of our shader. With the text coord edit node, we can interactively edit the texture coordinates of the triangle. If we move these handles, the texture coordinates are changed and we can see the effect at the output of the shader node. We can also connect another texture image and edit the texture coordinates as we like. Now in our shader, we can do whatever we want with the texture information. For example, if interpolated text coord dot s larger than 0 0.5, text color dot r equals 1.0.
if the S coordinate of the interpolated text coord is larger than 0.5, we set the red channel to 1.0. Next, I would like to talk about what happens when we specify texture coordinates that are out of the range of 0 to 1. First, we change the mesh from a triangle to a quad. Press the Create button and go to 3D, Compute, Generate, Plane. Then we connect the plane mesh with our shader. Ok, we see that the quad fills the whole output image and that the texture coordinates go from 0 to 1. Now, let's see what happens when we scale the texture coordinates. For example, we can scale them by a factor of 3.0 and subtract 1.0. Consequently, the texture coordinates are now no longer in the range from 0 to 1, but in the range from minus 1 to 2. Ok, what we observe here is called clamp to edge. An interpolated texture coordinate greater than 1 is set to 1, and a coordinate lower than 0 is set to 0, which gives us the shown effect. However, this is only one of the possible wrapping modes. In the GSN Composer, you can switch the wrapping mode using key value pairs that are placed in a comment after the definition of the sampler 2D variable. Uniform sampler 2D, my texture, wrap S equals repeat, wrap T equals repeat. This sets the wrapping mode to repeat, which means that the fractional part of the texture coordinate is used. For example, if the texture coordinate is 1.7, the resulting coordinate is 0.7. Then there is also the wrapping mode mirrored repeat. Wrap S equals mirrored repeat, wrap T equals mirrored repeat. This mode also repeats the texture, but the direction is reversed every second time. We can see this when we change the scaling of the texture coordinates to 5 and subtract 2. Ok, great. As a last exercise, let's try to reproduce a cube example from the beginning. We open the project Shaders Monthly 03 from episode number 3. In this example, we use the model view matrix to apply a transformation to the mesh. We replace the torus knot mesh with a cube. 3D Compute Generate Cube. We open the shader editor and extend the code in a similar way as before. In vec2 text coord, out vec2 interpolated text coord, interpolated text coord equals text coord. And in the fragment shader, in vec2 interpolated text coord, uniform sampler 2D my texture, Vec4 text color equals texture my texture interpolated text coord. Out color equals text color. Then we generate a color grid node and connect it to the my texture slot of the shader. Ok, so far so good. But this looks different from the example from the beginning because the complete texture is placed on every side of the cube. Obviously, the texture coordinates are different from what we want. We create a text coord edit node. 3D Compute Mesh Text Coord Edit. We edit the texture coordinate such that they match the example from the beginning. This is the top side. The bottom side must be rotated. This is the front. The back. the right side and finally the left side. Ok, great, this looks very similar. Now we also had the stone demon example from the beginning where we used several textures for different properties of the shading model. 
if you have watched episode number 4 about blind fong shading. This is now easy to achieve. Open the project Stone Demon and select the graph Stone Demon Fong. Here you see the four textures for color, normal offset, roughness and emission. We open the shader editor and look on how the textures are used. Here you see the definition of the corresponding four sampler 2D variables outside of the main function. At the beginning of the main function, we read the properties from the textures using the now well-known GLSL texture function. TC are the texture coordinates. Then we use the fetch properties down here as parameters for the modified Fong BRDF. Okay, that's it for today. In the next episode, we will have more on texture mapping. In particular, we will talk about MIP maps and filter parameters. If you have questions, use the comments or get in contact with me. As always, if you prefer C++ or Java source code, this can be exported in the shader editor of the GSN Composer or can be found in the video description. See you at the next episode of Shaders Monthly. Thank you.